The dramatic verdict tonight in the mysterious murder case of a 12-year-old boy. The college soccer coach accused of strangling his ex-girlfriend's son. The judge's announcement rocked the child's family and divided a small New York town. Tonight, the defendant speaks out, telling a very different story than the prosecution. So who's telling the truth? Here's ABC's Elizabeth Vargas. It's Judgment Day in a case that's prompted national headlines and divided a community. Nearly five years after the brutal murder of young Garrett Phillips and after three weeks of trial, the accused, 42-year-old soccer star turned coach Nick Hillary, is about to hear his fate. It is the judgment of this court that as to the charge of murder in the second degree... 2011, a rainy afternoon in Potsdam, New York, 12-year-old Garrett Phillips is heading home from school. Tell me about his personality. It just seemed like he was 100 miles an hour all the time. Soccer, lacrosse, hockey, football. Wow, an all-around athlete. Yes. Until recently, Tandy and Nick had been a couple, even living together, which had raised eyebrows in the small town. Do you feel like you stuck out? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, sometimes you're the only one of color in the grocery stores. That day in 2011, across the hall from Tandy's apartment, college students Sean Hall and Marissa Vogel hear something. I said, did you hear that? We were both convinced that we had heard either no or ow, and then definitely a help. So I knew it was one of the children right away. It just sounded urgent. Marissa goes to investigate, knocks on the door. It was completely quiet until I heard a click of a lock. It was instant goosebumps. Um, my name is Marissa Vogel. I thought I heard um, some screaming like no and help a couple of times. When police finally get inside, Garrett Phillips is lying on the floor of his mother's bedroom. Initially, my officers, they were focused on saving Garrett's life at that point in time. They didn't really know, they didn't know who they had or what they had. They called for medical intervention immediately, and that's when the emergency response began. He is rushed to the hospital. And then the shocking autopsy. Rug burns on Garrett's legs, suspicious marks on his face and neck. The cause of death, suffocation and strangulation. 12-year-old Garrett Phillips was murdered. Did police ask you who would want to harm your son? Yes. It was like, you know, everybody liked Garrett. And you know, no one ever had a problem with Garrett. And then it's like, oh, there was one person. Just one? Just one. Who was it? Nick. Nick Hillary? Yes. Tandy says Nick and Garrett didn't get along. She told me that Garrett had come there and said, I hate Nick, I don't want to live here with him anymore. Two days after the murder, the police ask Hillary to visit the station. Hillary says police held him against his will all day. Why do you think there's this depth of fervor to get you? Because I think I have crossed the line of being a black man, honestly. You think it's all about race? It is. I sincerely think it's all about race. After three days of searching the crime scene, authorities can find no evidence linking Nick Hillary to Garrett's murder. We didn't get any evidence from the items that were tested by the, the forensic center in Albany. So no DNA, no hairs, no fibers, right. really nothing. They do find four sets of fingerprints on this window. None of them belong to Nick Hillary, and it was the only way out for the killer. He appears to have jumped from that window, a daunting leap. Oh, wow. That's, that is pretty far down. It's around 20 feet from the windowsill down to the ground. Police had suspected Hillary from the start. They secretly filmed him pacing the sidelines of a soccer game as he coached, capturing evidence of what they say appears to be a limp. You didn't jump out a window and injure your ankle trying to escape? <laughs> no, I did not. I absolutely have nothing to do with the death of Garrett Phillips. Nick Hillary is eventually indicted for murder. Prosecutors say a possible motive, perhaps the hope that with her son gone, Tandy might come back to Hillary, or fury at the child who caused the breakup. <laughs> with 10 jurors already selected for trial, Nick Hillary's defense team suddenly asks for a bench trial, choosing to put his fate in the hands of one man, Judge Felix Katina. 
his lawyer smartly felt, we don't want to take the chance of putting this in the hands of a jury. The many names that have been labeled on this defendant are the innocent man, the wrongfully accused. Five years after the murder, Nick Hillary's trial begins. I want you to label him for exactly what he is, the murderer of a helpless 12-year-old boy. Nick Hillary did not kill Garrett Phillips. The prosecution's case is based largely on a few moments of security camera video. That video shows Garrett Phillips skateboarding past Nick Hillary's parked car at the Potsdam High School. Moments after Garrett passes, Nick pulls out. Did you see Garrett skateboard by? No, I didn't. Because obviously surveillance tape shows that he did to go home. Exactly, exactly. And that's a pretty extraordinary coincidence. Very much obviously, so. Obviously, given what happened. Yes. Hillary claims he went straight home. But watch carefully. Instead of turning right to go straight home, Hillary turns left. Prosecutors say he's following Garrett on his way to commit murder. Why would you turn left? When I made a left, my intentions were to get to the office. And I quickly realized I need to make provisions for my daughter at home. But that's not what his defense attorney argues during the trial. He says Hillary turned left to visit his assistant coach. The inference you can draw from Nick making the left turn is that he was going to Ian Fairley's house. This case was primarily based on a surveillance video, potential motive, and his own arguably inconsistent statements. There's no hard evidence like DNA and fingerprints. In closing arguments, the defense team repeats the phrase reasonable doubt 25 times. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt, reasonable doubt. And questions the motive. You killed the poor kid with the hope that the mother will come running back into your arms? It makes absolutely no sense. Finally, just hours ago, Judge Katina with a decision. It is the judgment of this court that as to the charge of murder in the second degree as charged in the indictment, the defendant, Oral Nicholas Hillary, is found not guilty. <laughs> Nick Hillary acquitted and free to go. Nick Hillary is an innocent man. This legal team is not oblivious to the fact that there is a family that even after five years still grieves. A final verdict, but a town still divided and still looking for justice for a young boy whose life was cut short. For Nightline, I'm Elizabeth Vargas in Potsdam, New York. Our thanks to Elizabeth. Catch the first interview with Nick Hillary post-verdict and an inside look at the crime scene. Tune in to 2020 this Friday.